Welcome to the Toilet Paper Diaries. On this episode, we're going to be covering production secrets of a web TV show that nobody shares with you. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 94 of the Toilet Paper Diaries. This is Ernesto Verdugo, and this episode is going to be a little bit different than the rest. Why? Because my co-host, Dave Crane, right now is a little bit ill, and uh, he was not feeling well, and he was not able to be with us today. So as the co-executive producer of the show, I had to take the executive decision of I either we're going to go live today or not. Now... If we would have done this during the uh, first 50 episodes of the show that we were doing it daily, that would have been a very difficult decision to take because, of course, I mean, our goal was to make sure that we had 50 episodes in a row. Right now, we're doing the episode only once a week, and of course, we could have skipped it. But once again, the key to success on doing a TV show or a podcast is the consistency. Right now, we have to make sure that the show goes on and that's why I decided to take this opportunity to, this, do, to do this show on my own so that you can also learn, if something like this happens, how you can still create your content. Throughout the 13 months that we have been putting this show together, what, I, what we have done is that we have been using a lot of different formats, a lot of different content possibilities, a lot of different uh, ways of getting content. And uh, I'm going to go through some of them so that you will be able to be creative in doing shows. And uh, this is super, super interesting. So let's just get started with the first one. The first one is uh, we what we wanted to do was tie the uh, news that were happening on that day to the TV show. So right now, for example, uh, it is today is uh, Wednesday, uh, April 7th, 2021. Two days ago, it was the final of March Madness, the basketball uh, tournament here in the United States. And uh, Gonzaga University was playing against Baylor. Baylor won the championship and uh, of course, I mean, that is just to prove that we are live right now. So one of the things that you can do whenever you're putting together a TV show is simply basically tie whatever you're saying to some of the, uh, local, of, the of the news of the day so that you will be able to talk about them. Now, the important thing is not just comment about the news, but also create a tie to what you are doing with your audience. So our audience normally are speakers, entrepreneurs, and I want to tie it. So what did I do? I started searching about some of the stuff that we can get it done. And then I came across this clip. It was uh, done two years ago from Jimmy Kimmel, where uh, he started a uh, feud with Gonzaga University, saying that Gonzaga University didn't exist. And look at what happened. Have a look. Never heard the word Gonzaga outside of college basketball. I don't know where it is. I don't know anyone who went there. I don't even know anyone who knows anyone who went there. Those words from Jimmy Kimmel are worth much more than you might expect. That was the monologue that started it all between Jimmy Kimmel and Gonzaga. And even though it felt like it's gone on forever, it aired just two weeks ago. With last night's Elite Eight loss, it's looking like that back and forth might be coming to an end. Kimmel tweeted last night, imaginary or not, he's grown very fond of the Zags. And whether you loved it or not, that feud has created hundreds of thousands of dollars in free advertising for GU. So just how much? KXY Force Taylor Graham is live in studio to break down the numbers. Taylor? Lariana, when this started two weeks ago, I don't think any of us could have predicted it would be the start of seven monologues about the Zags and Spokane and just how valuable those segments would be for the school. I know this might be controversial, but here it is. I don't believe Gonzaga exists. <laughs> when he first mentioned Gonzaga, a lot of people in Spokane were just excited to get a shout out from Jimmy Kimmel, even if it was just for 30 seconds. It's priceless, really. Um, if you really want to put a monetary value on it, it's probably millions of dollars in advertising. Now, it's taken on a life of its own. All I know about Gonzaga is that 
In March, I hear the word 30 times a day. The late night host has brought up the Zags seven times over two weeks. Look at that bustling, totally real campus. It's dedicating 26 and a half minutes to his Gonzaga conspiracy theory. Because if I came up with a fictional school, I picked the Bulldogs as my. I looked it up today. There are 44 colleges and universities with a bulldog mascot. Kimmel's gotten creative too. He's brought on a fake spike. Gonzaga is fake. I'm the realest thing about the school. And Fred Willard. It's all fake. Your office is fake. He sent Guillermo to interview the team. Can you show me that handshake from Gonzaga? It's not one handshake that we all do. It's just. You gotta make up, you know, make up one. So like, just like your school? Yeah. <laughs> and he created a fake ad for the school. Preparing young men and women for the real world, where Gonzaga is. According to Trendkite, a one-minute ad on Kimmel is worth about $27,400. So 26 and a half minutes of airtime is worth $808,300 proving this feud. Gonzaga's like eggnog. You hear about it once a year, and then for 50 weeks, you don't see it disappear. It's gone. Is the gift that keeps on giving. And that amount will probably go up. We have a feeling we'll be hearing from Kimmel one more time tomorrow night. In studio, Taylor Graham, KXOY4 News. So as you can see, this is a great marketing lesson. Why? Because, of course, I mean, $800 thousand dollars in advertising that Gonzaga University got for free. So right now, as you can see, I am basically putting together the what is happening today with something which is still happening right now. In fact, uh, yesterday, uh, Jimmy Kimmel was still saying, oh my goodness, I mean, how is it possible that this university that doesn't exist actually made it to the finals? So then what happens is you are creating this recency, which is very interesting for your audience. So that's one of the lessons that you can learn from what we are uh, talking about. Now, throughout the uh, 50 episodes that we were working together on the Toilet Paper Diaries, what we did is we started also involving other people in reporting what was going on throughout the world with uh, other speakers, with other experts. And uh, what we got was great. So here's another clip of one of our reporters that was more or less about a year ago. And you can see how we involved other people without having to interview them to be part of the show. And this is also something that you can do. Have a look. Thank you, Ernesto and Dave. I am Chantel Simone, live from sunny California, where we are here on full lockdown. The state is completely shut down. People are still getting out, as you can see, doing their best to be active, yet keeping their social distance. It is funny because as you're walking down the streets, people are dodging you left, right, and center. People are forgetting to even be courteous and say hello. But you know, at the end of the day, here there's police that are, that are on the streets in the evening time. We have a curfew to make sure that we stay in the house in the evening. It has been one serious state of the nation. But nonetheless, we want people to take this virus seriously so we can end it and move on with the next chapter in our lives. So this is the state of the nation in sunny California. We're out, we're about, we're doing the best that we can given our times and keeping our distance. Well, that's it for me and back to you, back to the studio. You see, one of the great things about being the executive producer of your show is that you can decide what you're going to be doing. So you don't have to always rely on interviews, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later on, but you can also decide what kind of content you're going to be creating. And uh, one of the things that we really found that was a lot of fun was always including uh, something that was a fun thing. So we had two ways of proving this. And uh, we involved our good friend, Michael Dietrich, last year on Easter. It was just Easter Sunday, this uh, past Sunday. And uh, it is one year from now. But this is a piece of content that Michael created for us last year. And it was, of course, I mean, it is as relevant now as it was one year ago. Have a look. Hi, Dave. Hi, Ernesto. Happy Easter. Uh, we're coming to you live from the Netherlands. Uh, a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, Easter is canceled. It's not canceled. We just have to deal with it in a new way. Uh, and here's five tips for people who are looking to celebrate Easter in this new Corona tide 
time. Uh, number one, if you are a believer, go online. There are tons of online services. This is your chance to attend a service in a huge church if you'd like to. Check it out. Uh, if you are a more cultured person, you can travel around the world virtually. There are tons of things like uh, art galleries uh, that you can take a virtual tour of. So get a little culture this Easter. Um, if you are a family and you're missing thing, you know, your grandparents or things like that, there's nothing that says you can't, you know, sterilize and make a Easter basket, deliver it to the doorstop and uh, say hi to grandma and grandpa from a safe distance, for example. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for something fun to do uh, because you usually get together, there are a lot of online opportunities. Uh, tonight, we are getting together with a family to on uh, houseparty.com and we're going to play some games together um, so we can still enjoy this holiday. And finally, if you have kids uh, and you're looking to take a little break, uh, number one, I recommend an Easter egg hunt. Do it in the house. Do more eggs than you've ever done before and have a big prize. So if you say, hey, there are 50 eggs hiding in the house. And if you find all 50, you will get this basket. Yeah. But don't come back to mommy and daddy until you found all 50. And then Hide 49 and keep one in your pocket. <laughs> Back to you guys in the studio. Fun, right? So as you as you see, if you involve other people, you can create great stuff for your TV show. Now, how else can I also tie what's going on and make it a little bit controversial? Remember, if you are going to be having a show, it's okay to be controversial. Don't take sides, but just basically take two sides of one story to actually share uh, some fun facts or some fun stories. So, for example, this is what happened this year on the White House with President Biden. And later on, I'm going to show you what happened with uh, President Trump <laughs> with a very funny way. So, as you can see, I'm not taking one side or the other. I'm just going to present you two sides of the story to actually make a point. That's another great way to create content for your TV show. So, let's go see what happened on the White House this year. Have a look. We will rebuild our nation. We will re-engage and reimagine what we can be. We'll remember that with faith, hope, and love, anything is possible. And we look forward to next year when the White House will ring with joy the season once again, and there'll be an Easter egg roll, God willing. May God bless you all. May God protect our troops and take care of the Easter Bunny. And so this morning, he put out the following. He said, Happy Easter to all, including the radical left crazies who ring their presidential election and want to destroy our country. Quite different to what has happened last year on the uh, White House with another president. But now that is not the funny part. The funny part is that, of course, ex-president Trump or former president Trump also decided to have a statement, and right now it has now become a meme, and it has even become a song. So we found this guy that created the song about the statement of President Trump. Have a look here. Their space lasers run by the Jews, and Biden's win was all fake news. Dems had to cheat for me to lose. Other than that, happy Easter. I was betrayed by that Mike Pence. I'm full of gas, so I'm not dense. We finished that whole border fence. Other than that, happy Easter. I have an Easter message, cause I love the Bible so. The Easter bunny died to save our eggs, I hope you know. I'm actually the president still. The insurrection was a thrill. Mike Pence said that it was God's will. Other than that, happy Easter. I cured the COVID all alone. I always smell like Trump cologne. I am not fat. I am big boned. Other than that, happy Easter. I got more votes than Jesus because that guy was very weak. When Stormy Daniel spanked me, I just turned the other cheek. Shows how Christian I am. The greatest president of all was me. Did you see Biden fall? My inaugural crowd was huge, not small. Other than that, happy Easter. Another great idea that you can do whenever you're putting together a show, it's repurposing content. So, for example, I mean, there's a lot of great pieces of information that uh, we have delivered throughout all the time that we have been putting this show. And because, of course, we are putting a show together that is about how to create a TV show, I think this clip will be perfect. 
for this episode. Have a look. So I think what you're talking about is the ability to do that crossover. As speakers, I don't think our job anymore is just to speak. I think what we've got is the ability to cross over into late night talk show hosts, into musicians, into creating sound bites and videos that motivate and inspire people. And the revolution, I think, for speakers is not to be in front of a live audience in the same way as they used to. Many of them are now becoming consultants. Now, here's where I think it becomes really interesting. This is a template that's already been used in the movie industry. The movie industry was very simple compared to the TV industry. Take it back 20 years ago. If you're in movies, you're a movie star, super glamorous, loved by everybody. If you're in TV, you weren't quite that famous. You couldn't get in a movie, but if you could, then maybe we'll give you a chance. And if you couldn't make it to be a big movie, we'll put you back in TV. Then a flip happened. I think it was probably created by 24 with Kiefer Sutherland, my favorite show probably of all time, even though it's probably very politically incorrect, maybe for these times, but not for them. So Kiefer Sutherland created the box set. He didn't, but they did. The box set where you had to watch this television. And this television was so highly produced and so addictive that they had top movie stars, top producers, and top script writers jumping from Hollywood into TV. So what was significance? If you're a script writer and you write a movie for a, a, a script for a movie, before the movie comes out, the odds are it's gone through three or four different script writers, and you're lucky to see any part of your original script in the actual end result. But for those guys, if they got into TV, they'd write the script, it would become a pilot, and then they get a job as an executive producer to be there all the way through the series to develop the characters and what happens next. And so they get a job for life. That helps to grow the quality of TV. So why does that have a difference? Well, now TV is probably better than movies. I very rarely watch a movie because I don't want to run the risk of seeing a rubbish 90 minutes worth of stuff. But with a box set of TV, I know if it's got a good reputation, I can see the characters and binge on it for hours at a time. I think in speaker world, what you're going to have is no longer the keynotes. You're going to have the keynotes and the consultancy package. Yeah. So you deliver a keynote, the company likes it, and they come back to you for more all the way through as a consultant. So therefore, what you have to be is an expert and a farmer of content that evolves. So here's my system on new tech trends. And I will work with you as a consultant to give you upcoming tech trends to let you know what to buy and what not to buy. Yeah. I'm an expert on empathy and emotional intelligence. So I'll work with you now as you go digital and you have your staff all around the world to help you implement what you need to get the empathy and the culture to all these staff. That can come from speakers if they develop their craft and market themselves effectively. I think that's where we're going. Another way of repurposing content is by repurposing some of your old interviews. And this is an, an interesting uh, topic because interviews, Dave and I decided long ago not to have interviews in our show. We had actually some guests, but we decided not to have guests in our show. Of course, most people that are going to be starting a podcast or they're going to be starting a show, the first thing they want to say is, well, you know, I would like to have more guests in my show. Now, that becomes a big problem because if you're going to be inviting guests, getting the guests and inviting the guests, it becomes a big, big uh, task in order for you to do that. That's why we thought, well, you know, we might as well invest the time ourselves to create that content. However, once in a while, whenever you manage to get a, a great guest, of course, it is fantastic. Now, I want to uh, share with you one big secret. Whenever you're having a guest, what happens is that you're not anymore the star of the show. Whoever is going to be your guest is going to be the star of the show. And sometimes that is good. Sometimes that is not good. So let me just show you, for example, this is an interview that we have with Dove Varon. And you can see how we transfer our, uh, our uh, protagonism on the show to him. Have a look. In a world where engagement and retention are in a state of crisis... Dov Barron, a world-renowned leadership speaker and consultant, is guiding leaders and organizations to find the essence of their business and the soul of their leadership, to become magnetically attractive to top talent, and magnify engagement, profit, 
and positive impact like never before. So being an adrenaline junkie, I challenge my buddy that we should go hike behind the waterfall, which is pretty dangerous because there's a lot of about 70 mile an hour spray. But we got behind that. And when we came out on the other side from the waterfall, I felt like Superman. I felt like I had a big S tattooed on my chest and I could do anything. I was invigorated. I was excited. Your greatness as a leader does not exist on the surface. It does not exist in the status quo. It does not exist in the comfort zone. My name is Dov Baron. Thank you for your time. And now it's a real pleasure to have on Fast Forward the incredible Dov Baron. Brilliant, Dov. Woo. So good to have you here. And Thank you. I know it's good to be here. I know there's been a few challenges to get you on the show, uh, but people don't need to know about that. No. Uh, let's go straight to the core subject. You do a lot of things. I'm always incredibly blown away by the content and by the fact of the depth and layer uh, that goes into everything that you say. But the role of leadership has been something that I've seen altered in the last two, three years at least, which used to be um, what management sort of flipped over their job title to be, but it's a very different animal. What do you think it should be for people who want to really embrace the future of leadership? I think number one, we've got to understand that leadership and management are vastly different. And leadership is about humanities. We've got to understand that it's about the human connection. And if you want to think about it in the simplest possible terms, it's this, is you are already a leader. If you're watching this, maybe you, you don't think of it because you don't have that title, but you're already a leader. Leadership is about impact and influence and you are already having impact and influence maybe it's just on your own kids on your friends or on on relatives or whatever it is but you are a leader and you have to take on that responsibility because you are leading by example but we're not talking about following certain rules we're talking about leading by the example of what is in your heart and your soul and the message you want to bring to those that you lead whether it's in, in your role at work or whether it's in your life. So there you go. And that is one of the reasons why Dave and I decided to basically focus on us creating the content rather than having guests. And this is a strategy that you need to think about. Now, if you have a podcast, if you have a show, I would love to go, I would love to know your comments right now of what do you think? Is it a good idea to have a show which is based on interviews? Or is it better to have a show where you are creating the show? Let us know right now here on the comments. I would really like to find out what your thoughts are about that. Now, talking about uh, having interviews, I want to uh, share with you another very nice part of this interview that we had with Dov Varon, because he is talking about podcasting. And the same applies to uh, web TV shows. And I think because that piece of content is so valuable right now through a TV show than a podcast, I think it will be very good for you to have a look. Uh, Dov, I am uh, intrigued because uh, I think you have uh, an incredible accolade of having the uh, most successful uh, podcast in, um, in the, what is it, the Inc. 500 or... So I, we have the number one podcast in the world for Fortune 500 Fortune listeners. 500, Fortune 500. And yeah, and Inc.com made us the number one podcast to make to listen to to make you a better leader. That's fabulous. Well, here's my here's my question. Right now, a lot of our uh, listeners are very, uh, I mean, very confused in the in the fact that they do not know what they do, what, what to do. I mean, they're speakers and they want to uh, get more. Uh, they want to they want to be seen more they want to be heard more they want to have more impact what is uh, what advice could you give to somebody which is basically just getting started with a podcast well i mean podcasting is the medium now it's the number one it's um it's growing extraordinarily fast one of the reasons that we're number one in the world for what it is we do is we we're the og we're the old guys. We've, we've been around for 12 years, and a lot of podcasts are happening every 20 minutes. So we, we, we've had a long-established uh, program. And I would highly suggest that 
um, anyone who is a speaker starts to get themselves on podcasts because here's the interesting thing about it. The new car companies are now putting podcast ability into their cars instead of radio. That's powerful. That's significant. So they will have Google podcasts. They will have Apple podcasts. They will have all those podcasts, Spotify, et cetera. You know, we're on all of those platforms. We already go out to 120 countries. And then you're going to be in cars. You have got to get on podcasts. Now, here's the thing I would say to speakers. Start off by going on podcasts that don't matter. Because I know you're a speaker and you go, oh, I can do podcasts. Mm, I really want you to hesitate on that because most people can't do podcasts. They don't know how to do them. You've got to speak in sound bites. You've got to be conversational. And most speakers want to lecture. If you do that on a podcast, you're dead in the water. So go on, mess around in some that are not very big, get 50 listeners, that's fine, and start to hone down what your central message is and the sound bites that you can give, including your stories in just a couple of minutes. That's going to work much better for you. And the exposure is phenomenal. I am interviewed, interviewed as in I'm the guest, about four times a week. Interesting take from Dove on uh, podcasting, don't you think? It is super important that if you're a speaker, if you're a trainer, if you're an author, if you're an expert, you get involved in podcasting and also get yourself a web TV show. That's why I would like to encourage you to contact us, contact Dave or contact myself so that we can help you create your podcast or your TV show. Now, to finish this episode, I want to also repurpose a great piece of content that uh, interesting enough because we didn't really know much about SEO and uh, about how things worked in um, YouTube, we created this piece of content and it hardly had any uh, viewing. And of course, we thought it was really a pity. That's why we went to the archives that we have created because that's an important thing. You see, when you start doing content, some of your content is going to do great and some of your content possibly because you do not know how to do SEO in uh, your YouTube channel is not going to do as well. So you can repurpose that content as I'm going to be doing right now to make sure that more people listen to it. Repurposing is one of the most important things that you can do whenever you are creating content. So as this is such a powerful piece of content, I want you to enjoy it because it's incredible. Have a look. There's two attractive legs of a virtual speaker. One of them is going to be having a strong online profile, and the other one is going to be having quantity, and once again, quantity of video content. I think you're going to find this information incredibly interesting. You're going to, I mean, we have been doing uh, videos on a daily basis uh, already for a number of months. So far, we have already received our uh, notification from YouTube that we have 500 uploads. Have we been paid so far? No. We are in what is called right now a YouTube orbit. What is a YouTube orbit? A YouTube orbit is the time that you actually start building your credibility inside of YouTube so that YouTube says this person is somebody that is a serious uh, content creator. From what we know from, from um, Gary Vaynerchuk, and he mentions this, and we have mentioned it a number of times, he says that uh, what you need is long-term consistency because that will trump short-term intensity. So you have to think quantity over quality. That is just absolutely critical. We need to have a ton of videos right now. If you want to be monetized in a few months from now as a speaker, you need to have a ton of video content. And this is super important. Why? Because it's going to be your proof. In the past, what you needed was uh, you needed to show that you have been in such and such and such and such conference. But right now, that's irrelevant. Right now, what customers want to see is the experience that you have creating videos and broadcasting and that's a very important point yeah the important thing more than anything is to make sure that when people need to find you they can find you 
They don't just get booked. What tends to happen is they're looking for somebody, they'll Google it, they'll see how who comes up on the first page, and they'll start comparing. So they'll say, right, who have we got? Let's have a look. You look at some people, I'll look at some people. And literally, they'll find something about you and compare that to something about somebody else because they're all going to have a consensus about getting the right person. So you need to make sure you're easy to find. And whilst I agree with that, about the quality isn't as important as the quantity, you still need to raise your game with the quality because if it's not good enough, you'll look like everybody else and you get yeah. hired because you're different from everybody else. It is a learning curve. If you think only quality, that's going to actually put a stop on people to actually taking action. The important thing is that you start creating videos. In fact, you need uh, 500 videos, as we were saying, 421 videos in order for you to be considered a serious uh, content creator. Now, if you think about, oh my goodness, 500 videos, that's crazy. Well, don't see it like that. I mean, it's just a matter of creating videos little by little. Every time that we upload a video, our videos are better and better and better and better and better and better and better. And, better. and that's the whole point. You need to make sure that you feel 100% comfortable creating those videos. Right now, more than ever, we have to be willing to do what most people are not willing to do. And I think that's just incredibly savvy and incredibly powerful. Let me just show you why. Here's a screenshot from a website uh, called Channel Crawler. Channel Crawler, what it will do is it will find the uh, YouTube channels. It's a search engine for YouTube channel. Two, only 233 uh, channels are there with the term public speaker. There's a huge opportunity. Now, that doesn't mean that not every public speaker has a channel because, I mean, for example, when I went there, my channel was not even there. And I said, well, what happened? The thing is, it's not optimized for public speaker. So I am sure that if you possibly have a, a, a channel right now, Possibly it's not linking there because it was not optimized for public speaker. Now, what is the opportunity there? The opportunity is that if you are listening to what we are saying, for you to position yourself there as a top of the food chain, it's going to be very easy. The moment that you're positioned, you will be in a huge advantage because you will be able to sell your skills a lot faster and a lot better into the hybrid world, the virtual world, or even the life stages world. When we're sharing ideas and tips and, uh, and different tricks, it's down to you to take action and implement it. I mean, one of the things that Ernesto and I have been doing for years is when we, when we come across really cool ideas, we don't just put it on the back burner and let life catch up, because then when you return to it, you'll forget it and, get, and move on. As soon as you hear these tips, and I hope you're doing it with this show. Get them written down. Do them immediately because literally other people will get into the game with other things as well. You can fast track towards the gigs and the success just by doing these things straight away as soon as you hear them. Really important. One of the things that I want to show you today is that YouTube is not stupid. And that is one of the things that I want you to understand. What do I mean with YouTube is not stupid? As we were saying, I mean, there's possibly 2,000, 3,000 speakers that have a YouTube channel. Now, the challenge is YouTube is not stupid, but if you don't tell them what your channel is about and what your content is about, simply they're not, you're not going to be ranking. So it's not that they're stupid. It's actually stupid not to tell uh, YouTube what your content is about. So just think about it. The more specific you are in letting YouTube know what you do, the easier it is for you to have your content appearing there. Now, if you have one video, if you have two videos, if you have three videos, might not be very impressive for a client to hire you. But if you have a ton of videos, that just gives you a ton of authority. Now, that's one leg which I think is very interesting. Now. Let me just share with you, and that is that this is going. I mean, this tip that I'm going to be sharing with you is going to save you hours and hours and hours of work. The moment that I understood this, I understood how incredibly it was to pay attention to what I was doing uh, before, because previously we were just creating videos and they were not ranking or there was nothing was happening with it. 
So let me just show you here what is the uh, essence of the algorithm from YouTube. First of all, there's three elements that you need to have. One is the click. The click happens because of the title that you give to your video and also because of the thumbnail, which means the little picture which is there on your video. If that thumbnail does not entice the, entice the click, it's just not going to happen. The second thing that you need to uh, have there and think, it's going to be the uh, watch time. That watch time is incredibly important. And the next thing is the engagement. So right now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking that this is important, please make sure to give us a comment or give us a like, because that's exactly the fuel that uh, YouTube requires to say, you know what, this information is great and we would like to have more information. Dave, now you know what are the uh, algorithm uh, features that you require. Do you think that this is just important to know? I think it's essential because here's the thing. Right now, all the agencies around the world who used to be able to demand commissions and be talking to all the corporates, they're in free fall as well. They have no idea what they've got to do to be able to make things happen. Now, what we're seeing here for speakers is the same as what happened in the music industry when you had to go for a record label, but then you suddenly didn't. You'd create a YouTube video, you'd start to get liked by people, and they would find you. You can now, doing this, you can now create an audience that loves you, follows you, and will promote you when there's an opportunity to have you speaking because you're that guy or you're that girl that I watch all the motivational videos from. If you don't do it like that, then you've got to hope that you're on somebody's website and they decide that you're the person that they want to promote that day. And we're not talking about normal websites now because 95% of the speakers have not got their act together. I mean, I don't know how many people watch this video, but I guarantee that most people who need to know it, haven't watched it, don't know about it. So using these techniques, it positions you better, but more than anything, it means that your own success is driven by you, not by anybody else. You can get people to help you with the SEO and get people to help you with the keywords, but ultimately you can be your own broadcasting factory, your own marketing arm of your own success without relying on anybody else. Let us know what you're thinking. I mean, right now we have been sharing a lot of great information. Let us know in the comments what you're thinking. Now we told you why this is so important. So let me just share with you another incredible uh, pearl of wisdom, and that is you are not your audience. And this is something that uh, Dave and I have been learning. We have done a lot of videos which haven't really been relevant. Why? Because we were preparing videos. We thought they were interesting for us. We said, hey, you know what? Why don't we do this video? Because I think it's going to be really interesting for, for our audience. And it was something that we were really liking until I said, hey, hold on a second. I think what we need to understand is we have to figure out what people are searching for so that we will be able to provide that information. So you are not your audience. Before you go crazy, start doing content, just uh, type uh, several of the keywords of the stuff that you do, of your knowledge, of your know-how. Niche. Of your niche, exactly. Just see what people are looking for and then create videos. I'm going to give you a tip which is very interesting. If you are a leadership speaker, search for leadership speakers, see which one is the video that has the most views. And whenever you find that video, watch that video and then create a better version of that video. And that's going to really start giving you huge and instant positioning. Isn't that a great tip, Dave? It is, and it gets into the thing that we talked about, about um, what, is, what is the right way to repurpose somebody's content and enhance somebody's content. Success is leaving clues. And if somebody's already got a really successful video, you can piggyback off all the people, especially as YouTube normally shows a video and then gives you a couple of options of what to watch next. If you're very close in your content or in your thumbnail or in your keywords to what people have already watched, you will find that they'll watch you anyway. And you'll just find your numbers go through the roof just purely because of piggybacking of something that was already successful. I believe that YouTube is the next speaking platform because uh, that's going to be the place where you're going to be show, uh, showcasing all your knowledge, all your information. And uh, it has been like this for a number of years in different industries, in gardening, 
in uh, gaming, in all sorts of things. It is surprising that it hasn't really happened in the speaking industry. But right now, I believe more than ever, it will happen like that. So right now, if you want to already get yourself into the right mood for the virtual and video world, you have to think like a broadcasting apprentice. Every video that you upload, you are learning the uh, first episodes of the Toilet Paper Diaries till now. And that was just a few months from now. Is there a difference? They should have been flushed down the toilet alongside the paper, to be honest with you. They're not, they're not the quality that we're exuding now, but what, one thing that is true is you can see the learning curve right from the very beginning, and that's just as valid. But they weren't terrible, but they were different. And I think that the, when somebody starts making their videos and they start making, start making their podcasts, they worry about being too, you know, I, I've got to be at least as good as this. Don't. Just start working on it. You'll grow as you get on with it. And when you pay attention to what you've just done, give yourself a hard time and say, oh, what could I improve? What could I tweak? What would make it better? But don't give yourself such a hard time so you don't think you can improve and you give up. It's always a case of being a work in progress. And whilst you're doing this, there's a ton of other people who will start doing it and then they'll stop because they don't like their own self-talk about it. So it's a journey. Keep moving. Yeah, exactly. It's a journey. And uh, first of all, keep on uploading videos. Get yourself into an orbit. And that is actually the word. And I think it's very cool. So where are you right now? We are in an orbit. <laughs> that sounds even funny. <laughs> So yeah, we are in an orbit and right now we have already accomplished 500 uploads. Our next uh, step is the uh, 1,000 subscribers and then little by little we will get into the 4,000 hours. This is going to be taking approximately eight to nine months, but uh, this is getting us into the right path. And what I think for me, the most interesting path is not so much this, but the fact that we are growing and that we are becoming better broadcasters. Next thing that I wanted to share with you, because of course the subscribers is also very interesting. I, I want to share with you a short little secret, which I think it's really cool. Uh, if you are watching right now, please go to bit.ly forward slash subsecret, and you're going to get into our channel and then subscribe. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is you have to make sure that everywhere you share a way for people to subscribe into your uh, YouTube channel. And what you do is in you get your, your YouTube channel and then, for example, ours is uh, youtube.com forward slash speak in Dubai. And then you put question mark sub underscore confirmation equals one. And then immediately people will be able to subscribe to your channel. And this is, you know, it's a, it's a slow trick, but uh, the more you use it, the more that people start getting into your into your uh, channel. We have added this into um, the description of each of the videos. And uh, so far, we have this week gone to about 120 extra subscribers. So that's just an important thing for you to know. Is that a, I mean, it's a bit of a technical tip, Dave. I know that you're not the most technical person, and that is not your really your your forte. But I know that you will enjoy this uh, little tip, right? To be honest with you, most of the technical stuff doesn't appeal to me so much because I like to work in the creative space of creating new content all the time. But I think that unless you're willing to hire somebody to take care of all these kind of things on your behalf, you need to be a jack of all trades. You need to have a pretty good understanding of how the thing comes together. Otherwise, you end up creating really nice videos that nobody's going to watch. And they didn't watch it because you didn't make it available for people to be searching for certain keywords. So everybody needs to get a couple of these things in, on board. And I wonder, Ernesto, whether this, I mean, this is really interesting stuff. It's really cutting edge stuff. Do you think this gets taught at universities? Do you think yeah. that people um, on courses are getting to learn all this stuff together? I would be surprised if they are. No, absolutely not. I mean, this is this is stuff that you uh, keep on learning. And what we're trying to do is we are creating those shortcuts for you because we want to make sure that uh, you are successful right now. The next couple of months for speakers are going to represent a huge opportunity between success and failure in 2021 and 2020. I'll tell you what it's like. 
To put in perspective, especially if you follow English football, imagine that somebody said, right, we're going to start a football league. Who wants to be in the Premier League? Who wants to be second division, first division, so on? And literally, when this changes in a couple of months' time, everyone will have found their way of getting relegated or, or being um, promoted to the next level. If you do this stuff, even if you're just starting, you'll be at second division with opportunity to go to first and then Premier. Premier are all the biggest names you could ever think of. Right now, what Anesta and I are doing is showing you the tips that will raise you above the game, make it at least semi-professional if you're not already professional, because the game is going to change. Right now, there's a reset button on everything, and that makes it really exciting if you know what to do. Exactly. So now the question is, how can you create your videos? What's exactly what you need to do to create your videos? So Dave and I have created a recipe for you. Because if you follow this recipe, you will be able to get your videos done and they will be correctly positioned and you will be in your way to success. So here's the recipe and just follow the recipe. Make a screenshot of this and you will be able to do it. So you need to create 12 to 15 minute videos. That is the best uh, length on the videos, which uh, people are always asking. So how long should my video be? And uh, the reason why... 10 to 15 minutes, minute videos is just the right term is because that gives, you know, enough time to create more view time. If you have a one minute video or two minute video, you will need a ton of videos, a lot more videos, because of course the watch time is a lot less. So the important thing is make sure that your videos are uh, between 12 to 15 uh, minutes long. Now, whenever you are creating a video, and look at how we are doing it ourselves. Ask a, me, tell me more uh, question. Like we say, who would like to know the way to position yourself in YouTube? Now, that's a great question to start a video with. So now that's exactly how you ask your uh, first question. Then you're going to go into a stinger, a jingle. It's like a little jingle. So uh, if, um, uh, if you do not know how to do that, just contact Dave and myself, and we will be happy to help you uh, with those kind of things. Next step is you have to mention the uh, three points or the seven points that you're going to be covering on that video. So as they say in sales, first of all, you tell them what you're going to tell them. You tell them and you told them what you told them. It's exactly the same thing as it has always been. So today we're going to be covering three strategies on how to position yourself in YouTube. Can you see how it goes? That is the next part on the uh, recipe. Then the next thing that you need to do is you are going to tell them to subscribe and to smash the notification bell. You have heard us saying it multiple times. Why do we do it? Because, of course, we need to make sure that it's done. And also, if you mention something interesting, tell them. Uh, you, and, and also, please comment on the comments below. Right now, we are also telling you again, please comment on the comments below because that actually shows YouTube that what you're actually sharing with people is interesting. That's part of the engagement. Now, the next element that you need to uh, do after you do that, you share your points, whether they are seven or they are uh, three points. That is uh, uh, perfectly, uh, perfectly fine if it is three or seven or whatever it is. And then just to finish your... Uh, your video, what you are going to do is you're going to invite them to subscribe and watch more videos. That's it. If you just follow this exact recipe and all your videos are in this exact same way, you're going to start getting more and more and more traction. Well, here's, here's, the, here's the, the evidence of why that works. Whenever we show a video on the Toilet Paper Diaries or Fast Forward, of somebody that's explaining something, whether it's a Gary Vaynerchuk or somebody like that, it always has these elements on it. Now, why is that important? Why is that evident? Well, we wouldn't have found them unless they were at the top of the food chain when it came to those searches on certain subjects. So what they've done is created a living, breathing thing that promotes itself and gets found by people who then promote it to be found by more people. And so what you've got here are the hooks that allow people to want to find more and want to subscribe and want to make sure that it is something that they enjoy interacting with. If you just do your own thing because you believe it's the right thing to do and you believe in it, you'll end up with an audience of one. 
because this is now the Wild West. And it's quite clear that the big guys have got teams working on this. You don't need teams. You just need to work on the stuff that you have in front of you and follow these formulas. And with that, I would like to finish episode 94. I think it is uh, amazing. As you, see, as you see, I put together this show on my own. Within an hour, I transmit it with you live. I am sharing with you all this um, great information. And whenever you start already becoming proficient in using tools like BeLive, like StreamYard, like uh, OBS, like Zoom, you will be able to do similar stuff. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and uh, see you next week on the next episode of the Toilet Paper Diaries. Bye-bye.